Welcome back, everybody. It's Amanda Rideout, health coach, and we are here with our favorite pharmacist, Ben Fuchs, to continue our talk on the seven types of acne. And today we're looking at type three. Type three, digestive acne. Digestive acne. Which I consider to be the most tragic of all the acnes. Because with digestive acne, you have a type, uh, uh, health condition that will transform itself and reverse itself immediately as soon as you just do one simple little thing. Mm -hmm. And that is remove whatever is triggering the digestive reaction. So in order to understand digestive acne, we've got to understand the similarities between the skin and the digestive system. The skin and the digestive system have a lot in common. For one thing, they're both barriers. The skin is a barrier to the outside world. The digestive system is a barrier to the food world. Mm -hmm. to the, as such, there's large concentrations of defensive cells in both the skin and the digestive system. They're both boundaries where the inside meets the outside. In, the, okay. in this, terms of the skin, it's where the outside world meets the skin. And in terms of the inside, it's where food meets the, meets the blood, basically. So nature has seen fit to have both, uh, both of these areas to be centers of immunity, of immune cells, of defense. You have the army is located on the boundaries, like in North Korea, South Korea, okay? Right on the boundaries where you keep the army. So uh, when something happens in the immune system, because the immune system operates as a complex, even though it's localized in the skin and it's localized in the digestive system and there's some in the blood and there's some in the nervous system, et cetera, it's kind of scattered about and you have headquarters, it operates homogeneously as a team, monolithically. So when it, oper when it becomes activated in the uh, digestive system, the blood immune part of the immune system gets activated and the skin part of the immune system gets activated and all the various areas where there's immune, immune concentrations or immune cells, they get activated along with it. Do you follow me? Yeah. It's, oper it's one body. It's like an immune <clears throat> system body, if you will. Yeah. And so the cells of the digestive system, the immune cells of the digestive system, uh, their cousins in the skin react when the, the cells in the digestive system react. So if there's a problem at the digestive system level in terms of immunity, in terms of defense, in terms of something not getting processed, it's going to show up everywhere, including the skin. And what's worse, the more the immune system becomes active, the more it becomes active. Because when the immune system becomes active, the body thinks, oh, we need more cells, more army coming to the area, more, more uh, uh, immune cells to come to the area, because obviously that's a, that's a part of the body that's being breached. Right. That's a part of the defenses that's being broken into. So we're going to put extra army there, which, of course, causes more of an immune reaction. And this, this is a downward spiral that continues. So once it happens, it tumbles out. Of, if, if it starts to happen in a significant way, it can tumble out of control real quickly. And these are the people that you see who have carpet-like lesions all over their faces, yeah. okay? Car like just from forehead to chin or concentrated in this area here. And this is one of the ways that you can tell, by the way, digestive acne versus regular acne. Remember the first two acnes, androgenic right. acne and adrenal acne, male hormone acne and adrenal acne. Adrenal acne is uh, marked by lots of oil. Male hormone acne is a T-zone phenomena and it, both of these kinds of acnes have comedones, we said. A comedone is a pimple. Yeah. Okay, a discrete pimple. A discrete pimple is caused by a combination of cells dividing really fast inside the follicle. Remember, you've got holes in your face, holes in your skin, and the cells divide really fast in there, and then they get clogged up with oil, bacteria feed on there, and that's where you get your classic pimple. That's a yeah. comedone. Now, what we're talking about with digestive acne is a completely different mechanism. That's an immune inflammatory mechanism that follows an attack on the body. That's not a nutritional deficiency mechanism or a stress mechanism or a, or a, uh, a uh, insulin mechanism like the first two acnes right. or a hormonal mechanism. This is an attack. Okay. It's a defensive response, and that's how you need to perceive it. Now, if you have a defensive response, what is the logical question to ask? Well, what's... If you what, want to reverse it. Right. What's it attacking the body that I'm responding to it? You don't have to be a doctor to know that, right? That's not a fancy, that's not, a, that's not something you've got to go to medical school for, yeah. right? If you have a defensive response, the logical question is, what is the offending agent, right? right. No doctoring required here. Right. This is not hard science. This is not anything you need to have classes on. It's a simple, logical deduction. I got a problem. What is causing that problem? I've got a reaction. What is causing that reaction? Right. So first of all, we want to be able to assess digestive acne. The way you assess it is by looking for rashes, looking for not discrete pimples, but kind of carpet-like, kind of, kind of like a, 
almost like a, like a mash. They call it a macula versus a papula. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, a flat, raised kind of area rather than discrete pimples. Okay. It's like a field, if you will. Rather than discrete units, it's more like a field phenomena. Why is it a field phenomena? Because you're looking at an immune condition rather than an individual follicle condition. So it comes across, it appears like a field. I call it a carpet. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Is that good? Okay. And it'll appear right along this area here it's, for better or worse. Some people have it really bad. Some people will not have it as bad. But whenever you have it, you have to focus on the digestive system. That's the key. And so what does that mean to focus on the digestive system? Well, it means a couple things. First of all, you want to look for uh, foods that you have problems with. That's the first thing. Uh, and we talked about the GLED foods. I think we, yeah. are we, no. the, we didn't talk about the GLED foods, right? The GLED foods are grains, legumes, eggs, and dairy. The GLED foods. Those are the biggest problems for most people. And that means not just gluten. When I say grains, I'm talking grains, yeah. flour. Okay, now if you sprout your grains, you may be able to do it. You may not be able to do it. You've got to kind of play around and see. Sprouting tends to deactivate things, but not all the time. Mm -hmm. So you've got to see how you do with sprouts. Um, legumes mean peas and beans, soy, peanuts. These are all examples of legumes. There's many, there's thousands of different legu leguminous plants, they mm -hmm. call them. Then there's uh, eggs and dairy. And all of these are very active protein foods. Uh, they have lots of protein, especially eggs and dairy. Legumes are very, very high in protein, and uh, grains are also high in protein. And it's really the, the, the proteins are one of the problematic components. We react to proteins in an allergenic fashion. Proteins tend to be, proteins tell the body that the enemy has entered into the body because proteins are what make life life. It's what makes an insect an insect, a bacteria a bacteria. Life is its, is its own unique life form via the protein, and so the immune system learns to look at proteins, to read proteins. And so we can react to proteins in various ways. So the GLED foods are the first thing in various negative ways. So the, the GLED foods are the first things to focus on. The second thing to focus on is foods that are specific for you, that you have problems with. The GLED foods are like a general guideline, but you may have problems with the nightshades. You may have problems with tomatoes. Yeah. You may have a problem with some kind of processed food. You've got to see how you react to foods and always use your digestive symptoms as a guide. If you have this kind of acne, you will always, not 99% of the time, right. you will always, 100% of the time, have an associated digestive issue. So link your digestive issue to your breakouts, to your flare-ups. If, you if you never flare up, if it's really, really bad, stop eating. But if you're okay. flaring up, link them, to where you're flare, link them to where you're flaring up. If you have that, if it's really severe, you need to stop eating for a day or two days and then reintroduce foods back into the diet. Usually when it's that bad, though, you have multiple foods, yeah. which, is, which is a good thing because what it means is, is that you have nowhere to go but up. You know, okay. As soon as you remove one food, you're going to notice a difference. And that's one of the great things about the human body. The sicker we are, the faster we can recover. Yeah. It's really kind of a cool thing. The more weight you need to lose, the faster you lose the weight. Yep. So the GLED foods, look for the GLED foods. Look for specific prob foods, foods you, have uh, you have problems with. Now, that's as far as proteins. But there's also a sugar issue in how we handle sugar and how we process sugar. Not so much the sweet sugar that we talked about last time, but any kind of sugar. Sugar as a chemical in food. They call, them po they call them saccharides is the technical term. When we think of sugar, we think of the very simple saccharides, the mm -hmm. glucoses and the sucroses and the fructoses. But really, starches are long chains of glucose and fructose. So starches are long chains of sugar. And you can call them poly, many, saccharides. When you eat a polysaccharide, whether it's in a vegetable or a fruit or a grain or wherever it is, it goes into your digestive tract, and your ba the bacteria have to react on it. If the bacteria are incorrect at the digestive tract level, you have the wrong bacteria, not enough bacteria. If you have some kind of dysfunction, so-called dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria, you're going to have a problem processing these sugars. If that occurs, you'll end up with gases that ferment. This is one of the reasons people get heartburn. So okay. Heartburn is a sign that you're fermenting sugars incorrectly due to uh, problems with your microbiome, the bacteria in your gut. But certainly gases can form and get into the, into the blood, and that can cause an immune reaction as well. So uh, incomplete digestion of sugars can also be an issue. So you want to pay attention to how you feel after you eat bread or how you feel after you eat starchy foods or how you feel after you eat fruit juice or after, how you feel after you eat anything that has these long-chain sugars in it. Yeah. You can also make sure that you're using probiotic supplements. And everybody should be using probiotic supplements anyway, and also fermented foods. And then the third element that's problematic in terms of the diet, in terms of digestive acne, you've got protein, you've got sugars, is fats. 
Incomplete fat digestion can be a problem as well. And acne is, uh, skin problems can oftentimes be problems with how we process fats, sebaceous secretions, oil secretions from the skin start to change, inflammatory factors are produced, and this can exacerbate acne as well. It's not so much a digestive condition uh, in terms of the immune system, it's more of a digestive condition in terms of how we process fats. It's not, a, a def- it's not an allergic response as much okay. as it's just a biochemical response. Okay. So looking to fat malabsorption, uh, uh, gallbladder problems, liver problems, all of these can, be, uh, can cause this, this kind of diffuse macular rash that appears in the cheek area oftentimes, uh, and we call it digestive acne. Now there's another kind of acne that's similar and that's, it's a type of digestive acne called periorbital acne. And that's an acne that will form around the mouth. And again, you want to look at problems processing foods. Specifically, you want to look at a low chlorhydria stomach acid, low stomach acid. Many times this can be a sign that you're not producing enough stomach acid. It can also be related to a bacteria called H. pylori, which you may have heard of. Yeah. H. pylori is associated with ulcers and it's associated with low stomach acid as well. Rosacea can also be a sign of uh, H. pylori or low stomach acid as well. So if you have periorbital acne or rosacea, you want to think about um, uh, apple cider vinegar after meals, hydrochloric acid drops, bile salt, I'm not sorry, uh, betaine hydrochloride, betaine HCL, pepsin HCL. These are all stomach acid replacements. Also, pancreatic enzymes can help because if you have, you're not making enough stomach acid, the pancreas doesn't get the signal to squirt out its juices, and you can end up with pancreatic insufficiencies, and and that can cause problems breaking down proteins, and it can all tumble out of control. So So you want to focus on digestive health, basically, is what I'm saying. If you increase your salt intake, doesn't that help you produce more stomach acid? No, not necessarily, but HCL. HCL hydrochloric acid okay. contains chloride and table salt And that's what you need, chloride. It's a source of sodium chloride. But yeah. there are many reasons. One of the most important reasons why we don't produce enough stomach acid is because of an attack that occurs on the, st- on the cells that make the stomach acid. Yeah. The cells that make the stomach acid are susceptible to the same kind of damage that all cells are, but even more so because uh, they, ha- they have to deal with H. pylori as well. Mm-hmm. I- pretty much all cells do, but H. pylori has a down-regulating effect on, on the production of acid from the stomach, from those cells, plus you get damage. Between damage and between H. pylori, that's really the reason why people don't make enough stomach acids. Okay. Of course, it's aging. Uh, salt intake, restricting your salt intake is probably not a good idea because you do need the chloride, and that's, I think, what you're alluding to, but it's not like it's a direct relationship between okay. salt intake and, and stomach acid. Does do, um, taking the apple cider vinegar in water after a meal, does that help kill the H. pylori? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Stomach acid, that's how, H. pylori has to suppress stomach acid in order to proliferate. Okay. It can only proliferate in an achlorhydric, in a low stomach acid environment. Okay. Achlorhydria means low stomach acid. It can yeah. only exist in a low stomach acid environment. So yes, that is one of the ways you can kill it. I'm not sure if apple cider vinegar would be, itself would be enough to kill it, but okay. certainly it would support its, eradic- its, its eradication. Once you have an H. pylori infection, that's some serious business. The best, way, the best thing you could do is n- make sure you're using fermented foods and probiotics. In fact, that should, you want to be subsisting on fermented foods and probiotics. Okay. It's one of the things fermented foods and probiotics do is they crowd out the H. pylori. They oh. push it away. Also, the Z. radical is another, another strategy for eliminating bacteria. Love that stuff. Love that stuff. Oh, I know. Okay. Okay. So, um, so people with that kind of acne yes. need to uh, figure out what foods are damaging, and correct. that in itself can be a full time job sometimes. But like you said, stop eating. Fast. Stop eating. Stop eating. Do the swear of V. When you okay. stop eating, do the swear of V. If you if you want to coast into your fast or bone soup. Bone that's soup. One. Something that's very benign and light. Bone soup's a little complex, so you know the square V might be a little better. But whatever okay. it is, something that's just the bare bones minimum of what you need. Um, also, caloric restriction in general is a good it's a good strategy, especially if you have lots of oil secretion. You know, we talked yesterday or uh, last last video we talked about adrenal acne and yeah. oils. Keeping the calories down is a very important strategy for keeping oils down to prevent excess oils of adrenal acne, okay. but also as an anti-inflammatory strategy. So you'll, suppre- you'll kind of down-regulate, quiet the body down in general with caloric restriction. And fasting is the ultimate, obviously, caloric restriction. But even if you don't want to fast, just reducing the calories, just eating less food 
is a good strategy. And one of the easiest ways to eat less food is to make sure you're using micronutrients, is to make sure you're using your B complex yeah. and vitamin C and electrolytes because a lot of times we eat when we're really looking for micronutrients. Absolutely. So, but, but back to digestive acne, because we're talking about digestive acne, look to supporting the digestive system by eliminating problem foods and then using nutrients that uh, protect the digestive system or help rebuild the digestive system. We, uh, I think we talked about bone soup, the fucoidin Z, algaes, polysaccharides, the glucogel caps, glucosamine, gelatin. These are all wonderful nutritional strategies for coating and soothing the digestive system and stimulating the growth of new protective cells. Yeah. Um, mushrooms, noni, anything that has that beta-glucan. I think we talked about beta-glucan last time. I don't think we did, not beta-glucan. Okay, well, beta-glucan is a really neat ingredient that's found in mushrooms and found in, in grains and, and uh, a certain uh, veg and most actually most vegetables will make some beta-glucan. It has a nice coating, soothing effect on the digestive system. It can help build the immunity. Um, there's a, something called glutamine powder, which you yeah. can use. Whey protein is a good source of glutamine powder. Whey protein is also very good for the digestive system. Um, uh, what else? Uh, so there's something called Jerusalem artichoke, which yeah. is a prebiotic that helps build and strengthen probiotics, the bacteria in the digestive tract. Um, what are some other good? Oh, inulin. If you can find inulin, inulin powder, it's a type of starch that can help support the health of uh, uh, the probiotics, uh, the microbiome. Uh, what else? Miso soup, tempeh, anything fermented. Wow, that's a lot of great information. Um, I can't wait for our next, our next video, which is going to type, be type four. Type four, and that is. Do we want to say it? Liver. Okay, liver acne. Yes. Liver. Okay, so everybody, stay tuned. We will get back to you soon. And thank you so much, Ben. You have a wonderful thank week. Thank you.